obviously Sunday was about Andy Dalton and him playing well and him unlocking the offense and the Panthers winning and it's about the guys on the field. It was also a little bit about Bryce Young. For better or worse. And but it's professional sports, so you open yourself up to the 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 praise and the the scrutiny that comes with it. Uh after that week three game, I do believe that any shred of confidence that Bryce Young had had maintained was probably shattered about halfway through the first quarter on Sunday. It's like, oh, they are better without me. Like w- was I the problem? Yeah. It's like was seeing I? your ex happy. It's like, oh. It's one of those things that you never say. Team sport, you never say it. But that game stunk for Bryce Young. That post-game locker room when everyone was jumping around and happy and dancing, that stunk for Bryce Young. Watching everyone jump on Andy Dalton when he walked into the locker room, that stunk for Bryce Young. Now, you never say it, and he's a professional, so he'll put on the happy face, and he'll be team first, team always, team only when anyone talks to him. But I guarantee you, it's not fun to see yourself get benched and have the team get a billion times better. And that's just that's just a little bit of par for the course. Yeah, I, Like... You want your team to win, don't get me wrong, because your like, best friends are on the team and you hang out with them and you saw them work hard. But you want them to win despite the fact that the guy replaced you played terrible. <laughs> you, you wanted Andy Dalton to throw four picks so you could be like, see, it wasn't me. And then have the defense score four touchdowns, your own defense score four touchdowns and win by one and be like, all right, yeah, good job, guys. <sighs> wasn't me, though. So now you look at the whole Bryce Young situation and you see – uh, he obviously didn't play well last year. They in- improved a lot of the supporting cast, didn't play well through weeks one and week two, so his trade value already significantly lower than you f- when you first acquired him. Then you throw in the fact that removing him and putting in a competent veteran suddenly made the team much better. His trade value, meaning Bryce Young's trade value, appears to have fallen off the planet based on how much better the offense looked without him. So what you're going to have now is vultures. We're hearing, oh, they had four trade offers this week for Bryce Young. Oh, the the Bryce Young trade. Well, yeah. Probably calling and going, I'll take that off your hands. What do you think, a uh, 2026 seventh rounder? That'll just make it cleaner for you, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it just, baby, I'll do this for you. Hey, ham sandwich, I'll let you pick the bread. Yeah, exactly. What do you want? I mean... I don't have full loaves. You're going to have to have the little nubby end. But, hey, I'll give you the hand sandwich. You want chips? I got chips, too. Adam Schefter, obviously the uh, NFL insider for ESPN, on teams expecting Bryce Young to eventually be traded. I don't think there are many people around the league who believe that Carolina is going to hold on to Bryce Young over the long term. Like, you know, once you're benched that early on, you know, most people would seem to think and expect that you're done in that place. And while I don't think that they are – expecting to trade him in season i do think that that's a topic if it doesn't get done this season and they say it won't that'll be revisited after the season because there will be enough teams that express interest as there were last week and eventually eventually and inevitably he's going to get traded from carolina question is when does that happen and like i said the panthers say it won't be the season that's what they say and others think it'll happen after this season There's two parts that will decide his trade value. One is how high other teams were on him coming out of the draft. We heard going into the draft, the consensus was he was a top two pick, right? And and I would say the majority, even though everybody's going to go back and say, I didn't actually say that, the majority had him as the number one player in the draft. C.J. Stroud, there were a few that said he should be the the number one pick, but it it was a minority there. Um are there people that still believe in that? Like watching Bryce, do they watch and go, that's still a good quarterback? The second part is this. How negatively do they look at the Panthers? How negatively do they look at Dave Canales? How negatively do they look at Frank Reich? Because um, right, you're, you're seeing a lot of this right now. See what Malik Willis is doing in Green Bay? See what Sam Darnold is doing in Minnesota? 
See what Baker Mayfield's doing in in Tampa? What does that say? Coaching team matters. It's true. Coaching and team, they absolutely do matter. But guess what else those guys are showing? No matter how bad you look at one place, you're not ruined. The fact that Malik Willis has, is 2-0 and with the Green Bay Packers after whatever the heck the Titans put him through, <laughs> yeah, that means no matter how bad you look, if you're good enough, you're not ruined. Baker Mayfield. Remember what Baker Mayfield looked like in Carolina? <laughs> Do we? Remember what Baker Mayfield looked like? He's now a $100 million quarterback. So no matter what Carolina put him through, he wasn't ruined. Sam Darnold, you could argue, is like a like a what a MVP candidate. He's lead one lead one of the only undefeated teams left, right? Minnesota's three mm-hmm. and zero. Despite what the Jets and Carolina put him through, not ruined. So is there someone else out there watching, going, listen, Bryce Young looks really bad, but so did Malik Willis, so did Baker Mayfield, so did Sam Darnold, so did Jared Goff his first year with the the Rams. Like there's there's guys that have been turned around by better coaching. So what you need right now, if you're the Carolina Panthers, you need Dan Morgan to call up his most cocky, arrogant, confident Hmm. counterpart in the NFL. And you need to call that specific GM or that specific coach because that's the one who's going to say, oh, well, yeah, of course Bryce didn't look good with you. (laughs) You're not me. Well, yeah, of course Dave Canales didn't set him up for success. Did you see the first pass he called? By the way, the first pat, the interception that everybody got really excited, uh, upset about uh, with with Bryce Young, I'm not I'm not excusing it. Bad pass. He's overthrowing stuff over the middle. Anything high over the middle, you're just gonna throw it right into the breadbasket of a safety. But he was under center. Bryce Young's five ten. You're gonna bring him closer to the line of scrimmage rather than put him in the shotgun. It was play action which means he had to turn and take his eyes off the defense completely. After watching all of his year one as a starter, why in the world would you say, you know what, you're only going to have three seconds to take this this read. Let's take the first second and have you staring at the, the belly of a running back. Then he had to throw a deep, crossing route where he had a dig on one side and and a post on the other and and it's just it's not a setup play to be successful then he throws the interception again bad throw can't happen you're an NFL quarterback but that's the little snowball that starts everything downhill that eventually turned into an avalanche if there's another coach out there watching they're probably going you know what I would have given him first play handoff you know what I would have given him second play Quick game hitch, quick out, tight end, seated five yards in front of his face right over the center. Would have told him to throw it there. Just because Andy Dalton looked good doesn't mean there's not some GM out there thinking, you know, we could get a former number one overall pick on the cheap. And and even if it's more than a ham sandwich, it's still a number one overall pick 18 games later with a significant discount. And by the way, the Panthers would take a significant discount. They would take anything above bargain basement prices. They'll give you the dented can special <laughs> because they're the ones that drop the can. Liquidation sale. <laughs> exactly. Everything must go. Actually, Everything must go. Actually, just this guy. But uh, everybody else played well on Sunday. Uh, and by the way, like give da- I said this yesterday, but I want to say it again. Give Dave Canales credit. The first pass with Andy Dalton was not play action under center, turn around. It was a, a speed out. So he's a first first coach, right? For a first time head coach, just second year as a play caller. He learned, which is good. But I do think there's somebody out there saying, yeah, they just mishandled him. 